as you will recall, there have been some stories and rumors about how a lot of the lakes in the western United States have been draining out. Places like Lake Powell, which is the central part of the Colorado River, have been draining out in spite of the river flowing in to keep in existence. The same things seem to be happening to Lake Mead and Utah Lake. That seems to be a drought effect that's been going on. Nobody thought they'd live to see such a thing happen, but they did. People have been conserving water for many years, just like we've been told to. But at this point, it doesn't seem to be enough. People say that the development throughout the Salt Lake and Jordan River Valley is responsible for this, and part of that is true. But the main reason is because land in the west of this country is very low and the mountains are very high. This means that even if a river or stream goes through the area, there's no outlet to where it could ever reach the nearest ocean. It's easy to tell whenever you fill up a bathtub with water or some other liquid. A bathtub has a drain in to where it takes the water away after you're done with it. A wash tub or kiddie pool does not. For those, you have to pour the water out manually. But that's not something that you can do to a lake because lakes and ponds are already carved into the ground. Therefore, you can't pick up a lake or pond to pour it out. This means that the water residue, which is salt, will forever continue to build up in that lake. And this means that the salt will forever dry up the lake and leaving the bed of it exposed. Try it with your own model of a lake and you will see the water evaporates from it. We've looked at some more solutions for bringing the water to the Salt Lake and Jordan River Valley too. For one clip on YouTube that some of us saw pertaining to the Utah Department of Transportation, people were planning on building a pipeline between the Salt Lake and Jordan River Valley and the Pacific Ocean. It would make an artificial stream from the lakes to the Pacific Ocean in partnership with bringing the water supply to the Wild West in this country. This means throughout California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. The pipeline would have all of these spurs to each of these places to equal out the water to each of them. This mega project is something that we need to inform Lumosity of so that they can make their top that game look like it's working towards that. This way we'll become familiar with these much needed projects as a way to do fundraisers for them. In 1987, the new weather adjustment plane was fully invented to help to moderate the work efficiently. It's flown through the top of the stratosphere and it has a big water tank under it to carry the water from the flooded and wet parts of the world to the drought. It sprays the water onto the tropopods so that it can mount up into storm clouds. This also includes the oceans in the world where it can extract the clouds from the stormy parts of them. The Pacific Ocean is the biggest one of, on the planet and is therefore capable of providing the most water. The weather planes have no cockpits or flight decks or cabins for people to ride in them. They're remote controlled from each branch of the National Weather Service through monitoring rooms and airplanes in the sky that we ride in. The controls in each of these works along with the computers inside the airplanes and monitoring rooms at the National Weather Service. Everywhere they fly is typed into the computer and then the enter or return key sends them off to the area where there's enough water. Those planes fly faster than any military jet and are launched faster than anyone too. And I mean very fast. Their speed is controlled on the ground and it runs on rocket propellant, which is very flammable. This means that when the plane is not in use, it sits on top of a pool or lake of ice water to keep the fuel tanks from overheating. The weather plane was invented in the Colorado mountains because there's more thunderstorms a year there than elsewhere in this continent due to sky-high mountains trapping the moisture within them. Try it with your own model, High Mountains, and you'll see why. There are three brands of weathered planes, and they are the M7, the Q11, and the Z13. 
There are hundreds of weather services here in the United States, and I happen to know three of them. They're in Rapid City, South Dakota, next door north of Rapid City National Airport, Yellow Bluff in Utah, just west of Ogden, and in Spokane County, just north of Fairchild Air Force Base. With these planes flying everywhere, there will be a lot more rain refilling Lake Powell, Lake Mead, and Utah Lake, too. This also helps to counteract with the global warming effects, such as the levels of the oceans rising up and flooding the land too high. Sometime in the decade before the previous one, people invented the new carbon dioxide vacuum cleaner. It works like a naturally grown tree, only it's electrical, and it's powered with solar panels. It's a pole with a vacuum cleaner on top of it to help to reduce carbon dioxide gases everywhere they come from. There's a lot of them in Los Angeles, California, because the natural trees aren't enough to extract all of those CO2 emissions. There will be some more of those installed into the Salt Lake and Jordan River Valley along the Wasatch Front just above the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. They'll be able to reduce the dust from the dust storms along with the carbon dioxide just like the vacuum cleaner that you use in your home or place of work to suck all of the dust from the carpet in there. The full bags underneath the trees will be taken to the factories and to Utah Power and Light to make electricity for the state just like all of the other garbages. If you recall from back when I was talking about the vacuum chamber waste displacer a.k.a. the vacuum toilet, you saw how it all worked with no use of water. I ran a credit check over how the new pipe installation has been going, and I'll tell you how hard and long the process has been. The work isn't going fast enough to be able to make this all work out on land along with airplanes, spaceships, boats, and RVs. The pipes have to be dug as low as the big drainage pipes under the ground and go parallel to them. While the big drainage pipes go to the nearby sewage plant, these medium-sized pipes go to the nearest oil field to make biofuels just like hydrogen and vegetable oil do. You'd see that each of the gas stations, as they say it on the pumps, vegetable oil provides greater distance for big rigs and buses much more than diesel fuel. This same thing also applies with bowl-shaped urinals. People frequently call them bidets because of their shape. They use illegally high quantities of water as well as confused mentally disabled men. That contributes to water loss faster than any other use of water. This is why people are protesting a ban on those types of urinals. If the businesses can't afford to replace those with some waterless urinals, the federal government will bail out the money for that much required change. One more thing to point out about the loss of conservation to the planet revolves around some disability issues. Why people who function like two-year-olds as a disability can't work is because it's very arduous. Just trying to get them to heed directions. Mostly they work at the recycling centers to help to recycle stuff. But a lot of them, without listening, take some of that recycled material home for their own uses. It wastes the paper which costs us trees and contributes to global warming. Every caretaker of them is required by law to refer them to the brain surgeon to replace their developmentally arrested brain with one that develops like a standard one. This is not negotiable and will result in a loss of a bank account if you refuse this medical procedure. If you are flat broke, meaning that you have no money in your bank account, you can still afford these repairs with the federal government bailing out the money for you. If the place you have to go to for the operation is very far away and you have no fuel in your car, AAA will give you the fuel for your car. If the place you have to go to is not accessible by road, the FAA will buy you the airline tickets to get there. And now it's time for your feedback on this presentation to see what you can come up with to relate it to this. Subscribe and share your opinions on some of your own presentations on YouTube if you need to.